Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. Today I'm going to share with you something from my journal this morning. I was journaling as I often do when I get up. I'll either meditate or journal or do both just to really clear some of the the negative that I've been feeling or the heavy thoughts, the worry, stress, anxiety, etc. And it's been it's been working quite well. I'm keeping at it. It's a good practice. It's a bit like exercising though, you know, you've got to stick with it to, to allow it to help you. Well, this morning, I definitely got a channeling through in my writing, and I'm going to share it with you. Are you familiar with Abraham Hicks? That is a channel. Um, Esther Hicks is an incredible channeler. If you followed my work for some time, you've heard me mention her, in fact, at Fairy Grasshopper YouTube channel. I have a playlist of some of the best talks or question and answers that she has channeled. She channels a group of energy, a universal consciousness that is called Abraham. It's not one person, one entity, or one deity. It is the collective of wisdom, as you see with many other channelers. They call their their piece of the universe, of their cosmic consciousness. They call it something. There's some kind of a name. That's a human thing, I believe, to give it a name. And so Abraham Hicks is this channeling. So I'm going to share that with you. I'm clearly hearing Abraham. And so let me share. Understanding the desire for things to be different is natural. So I was thinking about, you know, wanting change or how, you know, when we're in a place where we feel down and I was actually asking for compassion and for myself and not to be so hard on myself and to allow myself to feel safe and to let myself struggle and not take that as this is my life kind of a thing. And so what came through was understanding the desire for things to be different is natural. It is not intended as a punishment to show what is not, what you are not. It is to know that life can be better because it is better. Choose better, better feeling thoughts, better things to see, to notice, sweet things like a bird, a cluster of clouds, colors, Simple things to help guide your mood into better territory. It's not a leap. It is called the path for a reason. One step at a time. Notice where you are and look ahead with optimism. You find what you're looking for. It's best to be aware of the focus of your attention, your looking because you will always, always find that which you are looking for. Then I heard Esther's voice, enough. And then she continued. Abraham continued. It is our promise to you that you were born in this body for a reason. And the time is exactly right for your becoming Do you trust the universe in its, our, infinite intelligence to bring to you all, everything that is meant for you? And in turn, will you allow your part of us to guide you into abundance, the life you've dreamed before coming into a body? Even if the connection is garbled and our signals between get mixed up, do you promise to remember you can trust in us, you, and the process of unfolding because it is all the same alignment. All parts are moving into and with the same intention to allow you to live fully the truth of who you are. 
the whole truth, not to pick and choose parts, but the whole, because that is what you are, whole and complete, filled with light. I mean, wow, that is powerful. That was the end of the message. And I just said, thank you, Abraham. And they, and they said, you're welcome. And they said, come again. For what inspires you also inspires us whole. I'm like, wow. Okay, so the part where they said, will you allow your part of us to guide you? And then they talk about even if the connection is garbled and our signals between get mixed up, what that is speaking to is our own inner guidance, our piece of the universe inside of us. That part of us that we call our soul or our intuition, that's what they are speaking of. It's, it's we have to be part of this. We're not separate from, we feel separate from because of our thoughts that in turn create emotion that makes us feel overwhelming or pushes us away from that which we actually really deeply want, which is connection. And it can be difficult because we have to traverse some of these what is considered shadows, which it's so hard to use that word. I mean, every time I hear myself say it, I go, ew, it sounds so creepy and dark, like a horror movie. It's not. It's simply the nighttime versus the daytime. So when we are walking through uh, things that we can't really see everything, it's not clear, we're not sure. What that really is, is this metaphor for inside of ourselves, the parts of us that are insecure. And the insecure parts or the self-doubt parts come up because we are simply not connected fully. In order to be connected fully, we have to allow those insecurities to be present and to recognize that they are not the whole of us. They are a small part of us. And they are connected into some experiences, some memories where we can let go of those things. They've already been, we've already had those experiences. They're the past. They're the past and not one event or even if there is a defining moment or defining event, a tragic moment or an exhilarating event. That one thing does not define us because we can't then look backwards and constantly compare our lives to that one moment in time, the before it and the after it. It doesn't work because there is a wholeness to our lives. There's not separate sections, even though it does seem like there is. Like if you look at life linear in the body sense, when we're young, we're a child, we have other people that we depend on, we become adults, we start experiencing life, we start making mistakes, we start... Um, making our own choices, some good ones too, some really good ones. And then we, we get into relationships. Some of us have children or families or we move, we do all these things. We have these, this life that we, we live. And then we get into different stages of life where those children are, are moved out, where they have their own families, where we move then out of our homes and into something different that's more small, that more represents where we're at in our life and that linear life. We have less than we did in the time when everybody was at home and we were working really um, in the middle of our jobs, like working up the career ladder. But in the ending of that time in the career, and we're looking toward retirement and not working as much and and then there's this like slower time, life kind of slows down, and then the health becomes something that we focus on because we're aware that our body is is losing its momentum, and so our, our attitudes, our mood kind of adjust to that, and we start looking toward the value of the relationships that we have and the simple things like watching the birds out the window or our favorite TV show or a call from a friend. I mean, those are like the things we live for, and... Life just gets kind of slower at that time. And when we look at that, it, it, it makes sense that we would have this frame of reference because we're in a human body to process and work through life. But there's more to it than that. We are transcendent. The spirit is always the same age and is always eternal. Therefore, there is always that inner guide that we have. Our spirit might have different voices from different parts of our lives, from different experiences to give us wisdom or knowledge, but it's never to pull us back into the feelings we had then or to re-experience what we had. And even if it's good stuff, even if it's happy memories, because the past is over, it's done. 
it's done. And what is important is this understanding and this connection to this higher evolution, this this universal consciousness, this some call God, some call higher self, some call um, God self, some call spirit. It's really quite profound. It's really quite profound. And it makes sense then that we would be constantly in a state of confusion, right? Conflicted feelings, emotions, because we know that this time span of the body is short. And then there will be a time where it slows down. And there's also this, this, this feeling of needing to not miss anything and take everything in and missing out on an opportunity or something, then it's just gone. And it feels like, oh, did I make a mistake? So then the mind steps in and then it is this kind of judge critic to help, um, help you make the best choices. And it means well, but it can overpower. And then we can be so afraid and almost paralyzed by fear of making bad choices that we don't make any choices. And we all well know that when you don't make any choices, you're making choices. So really, instead of thinking about action, think about the connections and the relationships. This is so profound. So just really, wow, I'm just looking at this like, wow, it is our promise to you that you were born in this body for a reason. The time is exactly right for your becoming and then, then there's asking of trust. Do you trust the universe? Do you trust God in its our, and then they corrected, in its our infinite intelligence to bring to you all, everything that is meant for you? And I'm like, wow, trust, that's a big deal, isn't it? Trust in the infinite wisdom within yourself. Trust that you are eternal. You are more than your body. And then they ask, though, for something in return, because in relationship, you must be in balance. That's perhaps where the conflict is, right? We seem like we're do-do-doing. Well, how are we receiving then unless we slow down to actually receive? We're doing, we're putting out action, but how, how are we receiving? We're not focused on that. So we're missing a piece. So right away, we're con- conflicted. Then they ask, will you allow your part of us, so your spirit, to guide you? into abundance, the life you dreamed of before you came into a body. Even if, so then they talk about, even if the connection is garbled, so even if we don't hear clearly, we don't understand exactly in our souls, we don't know if it's our intuition or our mind, and they say our signals between get mixed up, do you promise to remember that you can trust in us, you, that we are you and you are us and you can trust in us. And the process of unfolding, because it is all the same alignment, all parts moving into and with the same intention. This is so powerful. I hope that this inspires you. Does it? Does it feel inspiring to you today? I hope so. For more information about this, go ahead and check out my playlist on Fairy Grasshopper YouTube channel. It's called Abraham. And this, again, is, is um, f- inspired by Esther Hicks. She does channeling with a group of energies called Abraham. And I've been listening to them for many, many years now, probably oh, five or maybe even more than five years now. Yeah, probably more than five years. Oh, yeah, it's probably been more than five years. And so it was really sweet when I actually co- connected in this morning because I was just writing for myself. I was actually journaling and thinking about I have a counseling session today and what I wanted to talk to my counselor about and I was talking about this self-compassion piece and making some notes before my session today and thinking about this and allowing for healing then so when you think about something and you can bring it up and you're willing to let it be present with you then it's then it's easy to heal it you're bringing it into the light it's not stuck in the darkness it's out into the light and then we can see the truth of it. We don't anticipate. It's so much worse than we anticipate. It's so much worse than we anticipate it to be. No, it's usually the opposite. We anticipate it so much worse. The anticipation is so much worse. Have you ever seen a kid get a shot? <laughs> my kids, oh my gosh. One of my kids, especially like he would run out of the room like, oh my gosh, I have to get a shot, run out of the room. I'm like, oh, come on. I mean, I'm not crazy about the needle situation either, but I mean, he would literally run. He's like, you know, 13 running out of the room. 
and get get a shot. It's like the anticipation of it is so much worse than that one second that it is there. It's done. It's over. It is. Oh, it's done. Like I remember one time he was like, what? It's done. And we're like, yeah, you're too busy screaming and freaking out and telling us you don't want a shot that you already had it. Oh, so the anticipation is actually worse. So the shadow anticipation of how bad we really think we are is so much worse than the reality of who we are. Because who we are is light, regardless of what you've done, or you think you've done, or you think how bad you are, how bad thoughts you have, or how heavy your your heavy, heavy, heaviest, deepest of emotions are. You are light. Remember that. You are light. You are filled with light because that is what you are, as this channeling says, whole and complete, filled with light. This is Bridget. Thanks so much for listening. Ah, If you're looking for me on social media and want to connect, check me out at Bridget Inspired on Facebook, Bridget Inspired on Instagram, Above Life channel on YouTube, and Fairy Grasshopper channel on YouTube.